I want to start out um, by talking, um, well, I guess I should give acknowledgments. Like I said, I um, recently came from Oklahoma and still continue to be involved in the um, PCIT training program through Oklahoma. And um, that's our team in Oklahoma. I want to acknowledge them. And then we work very closely with um, Dr. Iberg and Dr. Boggs um, to make sure that we all stay on the same page. Because if you're doing an evidence-based practice, you want to make sure that you don't drift. Because if you drift too far, the next thing you know, you're saying, but this isn't working. And the reason it's not working is because you've drifted so far afield that what you're doing doesn't bear much resemblance to where you started. I, I think, as you've all talked about, um, there's a big movement to evidence-based practices. And, and I think that's a good thing. I think it's important that we look at practices that have the research and science behind them. Um, and the issue is, though, that evidence-based practice is still a little bit in the new stage. And, and what is it in medicine? They say that it takes 15 years from the time a practice is, is found to be effective before it's actually accepted in the medical world. And I think psychology, mental health, social work isn't that much different. That, that people are saying evidence-based practices, but then we have to actually make it happen. Um, this is sort of how it's been in the past. You have a model, and it sounds really great that, <coughs> excuse me, that we should do this. It, it makes sense. The theory is sound. So because we have this good, sound idea, we go ahead and put it out in the field and get people doing it. That's very different from an evidence-based approach, where we have the model we have the theory, and then we tightly control and test whether or not it does what it's supposed to do. So generally in academic settings, this is where the efficacy testing is done. With all the tight controls, does it still do what the model would suggest? If that works, then we look at effectiveness. If we move it out into the real world, if we move it out into the community settings to see does it still work but have some controls but, but understand that life in a community setting is not life in an academic setting. But does it still work? Is it still effective to do what it's supposed to do? And then and only then, if it's still working, do we say, okay, everybody and their brother should develop and use this model. So, is a reasonable theory enough, or do we really need the scientific tests? And our answer is yes, absolutely. If you think about what we know, I love the red ribbons. I think it's great. I love seeing kids saying, just say no to drugs, and that's terrific. But the reality is we spend millions and millions of dollars every year on just say no, because the theory made sense, right? If we teach kids about drugs when they're young, if we help them understand that you don't do this, that it's a bad thing, you say no, everybody wears a ribbon so there's that reinforcement, then we should see a change in drug use in kids. Makes sense. The data comes back year after year after year that we're spending millions of dollars and all it does is kids know more but it doesn't change behavior at all. 